Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna to be talking about Virgin Galactic, SPCE. Now on Thursday, they had their Q2 2024 earnings. We've seen this stock in quite a free fall. They've had a reverse split, of course, so that's why we're at 614 uh, right now. But last couple of days, we've seen it uh, go from uh, roughly 550 up to the six, uh, 614 level. Uh, we're still down quite a bit this this year, or a lot rather. Uh, but keep in mind that this company has a market cap of $174 million. Uh, we're gonna get to that in this video. We're gonna go through these financials. I'm gonna give you my thoughts on uh, the earnings and the outlook of the company. Now, this is uh, last four quarters. I also compared it over on a year over year basis. I think this is the reason that we're seeing the stock uh, go up a little bit. For this Q2 of 2024 here, we had about $4.2 million in revenue here. Uh, on a year-over-year -year basis, um, we're looking up about 125%, so pretty good increase there. I mean, we knew that that was going to happen. Uh, they kind of guided for that. Um, and of course, for the last four quarters, that doors everybody, ever, all the other ones as well. Uh, net income was a loss of ninety-three million dollars. That's down twenty-nine percent uh, from a year-over-year -year, uh, basis. So that's really good as well. And of course, from the last four quarters, cash is down about sixteen percent year-over-year. Of course, they've been diluting a little bit um, to ramp out their operations. About one hundred eight hundred and twenty million dollars. Keep in mind. That that's including restricted cash. I decided to start including the restricted cash in there. Uh, they include that, uh, and that's something that I'll, I will include going forward. These Delta class are looking really cool, and I don't know if these are partially animated photos because they have a video, uh, and I'm going to talk about that in a sec. Or there's actually some on the you know sitting in the assembly line that look like this, but they look really cool and. I'm gonna strongly encourage you guys to watch both these videos. There's one on the design overview that explains probably way better than I can. Uh, and there's also one on their business model overview. We're gonna go through this one a bit today, but again, they explain it pretty well. I'm gonna have a link in the description uh, for those links. If you're watching this video, definitely I think it's worth it to watch both these videos. I'm not gonna show them on this video, um, but click a link in the description and uh, watch those for sure. So this was the interesting, probably the most, I mean, it was kind of a, not too much to this presentation, but again, a lot of promises. Um, so basically what they're saying right now was with their two Delta class, so these are the spaceships, right? Uh, and then the one mothership, they're saying about uh, 125 space flights a year. They're saying that these one can have a turnaround rate of about three days. So that's about 750 customers a year. As we know, they're about 600K per seat. Uh, so that would give them about $450 million in revenue just from basically one spaceport uh, with two Delta class. Now, this is the part that confused me a little bit here. Um, it's not straight line, like 125 space. So for two of these, you're getting 125, that would be 250. So well, they're saying if you double that, you're gonna get 275. So I'm assuming they're expecting there's some more cadence uh, flights going on here because it's not directly in line. That's the only thing that nobody really addressed. If you guys know about that, comment down below. Uh, but basically what they're saying is once they introduce um, another mothership with two and we're, <laughs> we're a waves away from this, uh, that they're going to have about 1650 right? uh, customers per year. And then of course times that by the 600K and it's about 900 million something. They're saying about a billion dollars in revenue here. So that's how it, they're gonna go from one, you know, 450 to roughly, again, it's not directly in line, but $1 billion. And in this next slide, they go into a little bit more. And this is where you could generally be kind of looking at, potentially looking at potentially what the stock price is um, value at. So there's gonna say one spaceport here. Uh, this remains to be seen. You can have one scenario where you're going to have two spaceships, one mothership, and the other one was where you're going to have four, like we mentioned above here, right? Four and two. So, like I said, they said a billion dollars is about nine hundred ninety million dollars. Uh, in this case, the first case is four hundred fifty million, uh, and then they're they're giving us their contribution margin, which is not including fixed costs, because they're generally saying that these fixed costs are pretty fixed, of course, right? Uh, so that's your additional basically revenue per each unit, excluding. Uh, your fixed cost. Um, so in both these cases, they're saying they're giving adjusted EBITDA. They're looking at like say we go on the top end here, 115 million dollars a year uh, with uh, two spaceships. This first scenario here, right? 
Um, and then with uh, the four spaceships and two motherships, where like, we could be up to like half a billion dollars a year. It's this next space here when they get a second space, but we'll talk about when they're gonna be doing that. Uh, there were some questions on the conference call about that, uh, that we're looking at maybe annualized revenues about like getting close to like 2 billion, 1.9. Uh, billion dollars and then taking an adjusted EBITDA of say you know a billion dollars a year or something like that but that's in the case when we have eight spaceships and four motherships and then they talk quite a bit about just expanding different areas in the world I believe there's one in Europe was kind of the example that they gave um, but that's a ways out but it's when we're, we're going from this situation into this you know one space port kind of max out into two space ports that's when we could be seeing potentially like this is all very dependent on what they can provide you know you could see a 10x a 20x in the stock there if these numbers are actually uh accurate um so i think that's one of the reasons that the stock's been going up that's not going to bring us back to where we were you know five years ago four years ago or whatever but in these types of situations when you're pulling in you know you know two billion dollars a year i could see uh the market cap definitely significantly increase uh, they didn't talk much about these they always give examples uh, of these the tooling examples that they have um, but if you want to see more of this like I said watch the video um, I'll just show you the pictures here this was kind of cool they didn't talk about this but it's it's actually nice to see the stuff come to fruition the Delta finally assembly Delta final assembly uh, facility it's a huge facility uh, nice picture there it looks like maybe it was Maybe a drone that took that? Yeah, probably. Um, so yeah, interesting there as well. Going through the results here, this is pretty much what we've talked about already. For the second quarter of 2024, revenue is about $4 million versus $2 million in the prior year. These are very uh, approximate. Uh, driven by commercial space flight and membership fees. Uh, total operating expenses were down. They were $106 million versus compared to $141 million uh, a year ago. Uh, Spaceline operation expenses were 27 million. R&D expenses 42. SG and A were 34 million. Of course, they've reclassed a lot of these. We've talked about this over and over again. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Net loss of 94 million dollars, like I said, compared to 134 million dollars prior year period, which is good when they're ramping up. They've cut some of their costs uh, that I saw. I'm not going to go through their actual financial statements because there wasn't much that was uh, that interesting. Uh, but there has been some cut uh, cut cost. Adjusted EBITDA of negative uh, 79 million compared to negative 116 million for uh, the prior year. And free cash flow is a loss of 114 million compared to 135 million. That's kind of to be expected. Um, and then they did do some more dilution, raised $64 million in gross proceeds. Well, with a startup, startup company like this, that's kind of something you have to do, right? Uh, so that sounds like it potentially is gonna come near the end for now though. Uh, so the cash flow and balance sheet, uh, for Q2, like I said, it was $114 million in the red. Uh, the guidance for next quarter, we're looking at about $115 million uh, to $125 million in the red as well. Cash, like I said, has dropped a little bit, $821 million. They have their little note here, at least they say that, $33 million in restricted cash, uh, same, uh, which is, of course, the same as last year as well, $980 million. So it dropped a little bit. Now, in terms of the conference call here, um, they talked a little bit about what they're, you know, how many, there's been some research done, how many customers they actually feel like there's addressable. Cause this is something that, this is making me a little bit bearish on the company. I actually wonder what the actual addressable market is and how, how it would grow. So they're saying $300,000 or $300,000, 300,000 target customers and it's potentially gonna be growing at 8% a year anticipated. Um, and they say that this is less than 1% of the global demand. So there were some studies that, I think it was in one of their videos, so watch the videos where they talked about this. Um, how accurate is that? If if we could see you know a future when they have multiple spaceports built out and it's growing at 8%, that could be an enticing situation. But of course, this all remains to be seen, right? Uh, Q3, they essentially, essentially wrapped up the design phase of the Delta and they're gonna pivot into the build and test phases. So that's good, good to hear. Like we said, we were figuring 2025, 2026 area there. Um, in respect to the Delta class, they expect payback to be less than six months. They've talked about that quite a bit. That remains to be seen as well. And they did seem to hint that the dilution uh, in their stock uh, in, in terms of issuing shares seems to be done at the $300 million, I believe is what their uh, capital allocation was for that. 
And then there was a question about, well, when are we going to see that space, second space flight or spaceport, right? We gave the example previously in this video of uh, the potential revenues EBITDA in that situation. They're saying maybe four to five years. So you got to keep that in mind in your time horizon before we see something like that. Uh, there was also a question on the research flights. Um, if there's going to be more than those, if they're going to... But this is something they're going to look into more when they start ramping up. Sounds like they're not quite sure. So anyway, I mean, overall, this is for a stock that's being so terribly hammered. It was a pretty good quarter. And this is obviously a long term uh, play right now. Something to keep in mind, though, we might see with these interest rates dropping, especially in the States, if this is going to start to happen here, that we might see some roto roto rotational money come into small caps. And this is definitely a small cap now. So you could see some more volatility and these types of stocks getting a little bit more love. Uh, but of course, that remains to be seen, just like the uh, promises and plans of Virgin Galactic. We will see going forward. I'd love to know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next one.